Hey everyone, this is Brian here from Massey's Main Entertainment, and we're back with our series that I like to call, Was This Album Really That Good? And today, finally, I'm rejoined by one of my partners in crime, Doc. Doc, say hi to everybody out there. Hey, everybody. Uh, Doc and I and Rich used to uh, all collabor collaborate on these, and Rich has taken a little bit of a hiatus, So, but Doc and I want to kind of continue with the series, and our schedule has finally cleared up enough to where both of us can kind of land on the same day. And uh, we want to get together and finally uh, do this album because uh, this week it's all about the good. Uh, and and I'm, we're going to tackle what I think is probably on a, almost everybody's you know, list of maybe the, one of the top debut albums of all time. Definitely one of the best rock opera albums of all time, I would think. Iconic cover, to say the least. Uh, and uh, this lineup of this massive voice and this, uh, uh, he, he was a great singer along with this great composer. Uh, we're talking about Meatloaf and the iconic album, Bad Out of Hell. Um, it was released in the fall of 1977. Bad Out of Hell is this collaborative work brainchild of singer Meatloaf and composer Jim Steinman. Uh, the album is conceptual in nature and it recounts the adventures of uh, futuristic Peter Pan. Uh, from a musical point of uh, musical that was actually called Neverland, but there's a little musical point of view here. Uh, the album was produced by Todd Rudgren, another big heavy hitter for this album, uh, which is always a good sign. And the album sold over 43 million copies. And I had to read that a couple of times to make sure that was correct. Um, I own I own it to this day. I've got it on album right now. I've got it on CD right now. And I know that I owned it on cassette back in the day. So I, I think that Everybody owns this album in some format or another. Uh, it was number 343 on Rolling Stone's top 500 albums of all time. And Bat stayed on the UK charts for 522 weeks, which is fourth all time behind uh, What's the Story, Morning Glory, Dark Side of the Moon, and Fleetwood Mac's Rumors. So, Doc, I maybe I know how you feel about this album, and I'm definitely I'm going to take the last word on this, but... Tell me, buddy, why is this album considered so good? Uh, great intro, right? Great uh, coverage there to, to talk about what the album, album really is, right? So uh, it is so good for so many reasons uh, in my eyes, you know. It seems to be a polarizing album in a lot of senses out there in the community that, you know, people sway from it and they don't like it and they don't like certain aspects of it. Teach their own, that's fine. Um uh, I see it a little differently. I think this is, uh, I would almost compare it to, I was trying to think about how I could uh, summarize what I thought about the album in one sense. And I thought, you know, if I could sum it up, I could say it's like the last picture show, the movie, like a real coming of age kind of movie in music, because it's a coming of age kind of album. And, uh, and you know, a little bit of thought behind it and stuff like that. But let's face it, you know, there's some there's some cheesy lyrics, but there's adolescent lyrics and it's uh uh, great crescendos throughout the whole album. You know, there's three songs over eight minutes, I think. Um, to me, this is like a power rock, uh, operatic, storytelling adventure of an adolescent. And uh, musically, I, I, you touched on like who's involved here and stuff like this, you know, with Todd Rundgren producing this and jumping in on guitar and do the motorcycle guitar and the famous song, Bad Out of Hell. Uh, it took a long time to sell this album because it's it was different for its time. Uh, not many uh, studios were in the mood to put in a rock opera kind of album or something along those lines. I think this album's fantastic. Uh, I don't think there's... A, I know people talk about fillers and people talk about this. In some senses, to me, you know, Paradise by the Dashboard Light is probably, let's say, the biggest song on the album. That or two out of three ain't bad, I'd probably say, are pretty high up there. Uh, there's the power ballads, there's the the heavy rock songs, there's some the driving songs of all wrapped up with no place to go. There's there's a whole bunch of and, you know the storytelling and you took the words right out of my mouth with you know the cheesy scene at the beginning and then drops into like a, almost like a fiftyish sounding kind of updated pop song almost or something right. So it's got all these kind of vibes that it pulls from you know, 50s, 60s vibes. You can see being updated into the 70s with a little bit more power chords behind them. You know. I think the composition and the, the way it's constructed is top notch, man. I think the way that this album gets put together, uh, like I said, man, uh, Paradise by the Dashboard Light, uh, to me, you know, it's a great, you know, storytelling song of, you know, <laughs> you want to talk about coming of age, that does it all in it. Uh, 
but the album has that theme throughout the whole thing and in different senses, you know, heaven can wait and which is just a, a beautiful song. If you want the truth and the, and the, and the title track, better to hell. And, and to me, the, the bookends for crying out loud and better to hell are two of the better ones out there in music. If you want my opinion, I think this is a, there's not a, there's not a bad track on this album. I, I think this is solid all the way through. And then, I was really leaning on how high I was going to go on this number, but I'm coming in with a, I'm just going to drop it in a, at a 9.25 is where I've got this sucker. Okay. All right. All right. So here we, we, we decided to do this. Like it felt like a month ago, right? A month and a yeah, half ago, no, maybe. <laughs> and if, if we would have done it right away after I only listened to it like twice, I would have been seriously hating on this record. I gotta be honest <laughs> with you. I, I I don't know. I was it, it's not it's not what you you remember as a kid. The highlights of the album, you know that that that, that thing at first. But I am glad that it, like we've had a month and a half to kind of mull this one over. And probably this morning would have been the seventh time that I've listened to the Whoa. album in full. So over a month and a half. So gives me a little bit of a better perspective there. Unlike you, I feel like the bookend tracks are maybe the weaker tracks to me for some reason the middle feels really good to me i really i mean i lo really love the horns especially on all revved up and no place to totally. go the saxophone i think is just incredible in that um and of course then you know basically you get the flip side where you're getting two out of three ain't bad going right into uh, paradise by the dashboard light all really great together uh Took the words right out of my mouth. Very catchy after I've, you've listened to it several times. You know, I, I do like the quirky beginning where the little conversation sure. is going on. That's kind of funny. Um, but it's it, – so I, I definitely felt better about it, you know, after like the fifth or sixth time where all of a sudden now you're going, okay, yeah, I can kind of I can kind of vibe with this album. I can see what people were kind of getting at. I, I understand about the lukewarm reception at the time. I, I think that it's something that hasn't been replicated since. Not even by Meatloaf and Jim Steinman. They've nope. tried to replicate this album themselves and have failed master, ma massively. So uh, maybe I don't come in as high as you, but I definitely, if, if you'd asked me, I'll be honest, if you'd asked me a month and a half ago, I'd have been like, yeah, I'm going to give this album a six, seven, five. I just, you know, I, I can tolerate it, but, you know, only because my wife is absolutely in love with this album. Uh, <laughs> but now I think I, I'll give it an 8.25. I think That's the album, good, you know, buddy. it definitely is one of the, the classic albums of all time that you have to listen to. Um, do I think that, you know, maybe the tracks are a little long, especially Bad Out of Hell at the beginning? I think, yeah, it feels a little long to me, but that's just a personal preference. It's almost 10 minutes long, and maybe that's just a little too long for me. But everything else in the middle, it's, a, it's solid, I think. You know, all, like all the way from you took the words right out of my mouth up to, uh, up to Paradise on the Dashboard Light. I think is a uh, really good subject matter. It's fun. It's, you know, yeah. I mean, for people who want to get out there on the dance floor to this day and, and, and dance to a seven and a half, eight minute song, you know, they got to be doing, I guess you got to be doing something wrong, you know, right. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. Totally. And, uh, Meatloaf sure wasn't going to like make his chops in the movie industry, you know, with such great things like black dog, <laughs> stuff like that. So Rocky Horror. <laughs> Rocky Horror. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, yeah, I give it, I, I'll, I'll give it an 8.25. That's where I'm going to fall on this one. So very good. Yeah. yeah. You're right about the sax too there, buddy. And I like that's Edgar Winter that does that on that. Yeah. Tape, so. Yeah. It's very nice. Very nice job on that. So yeah. Um, he's got a great voice too, man. You're right. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, you know, if, if we'd have had time to, you know, do Bad Out of Hell too, this would have went a very different way for our boy Meatloaf. I have a feeling because uh, no, I think you're right. <laughs> I don't think they, I don't think they really got anywhere near this album yeah. again. So, but that's what we got. We kind of came up with a, a, a better consensus here. It really is one of the better albums of all time. Uh, it really is that good. Forty three million copies. Somebody's got to be doing something right. I mean, forty three million people people can't be wrong, even if, with a few redundancies and people owning it multiple times so uh stay tuned also in a couple of weeks i think doc and i are going to try to do our boy david bowie and ziggy stardust and you know i think we're going to give that one a try a little bit out of my wheelhouse but i'm going to give bowie a little a little bit of extra love here and, and try that album out you know for the second or third time i've only listened to it like twice ever in my life so it might be fun to do and uh until next time i hope everyone's doing well and uh we'll see you in the next video take care peace out